Welcome to this video lesson which focuses on the intersection of three planes. Before watching this video, I highly recommend that you know about planes, lines, augmented matrix, and intersection of two planes. Today we're talking about intersection of three planes. So what we're going to imagine is that we have three planes, pi 1, pi 2, and pi 3, and that we have written their augmented matrix and from that augmented matrix, we have reduced it to its echelon form, meaning that all the bottom left corner of the matrix, all those values are going to equal to zero. There are many different situations that we can have based on three planes, so let's cover them. The first situation is when all of the planes are coincident, meaning that they all lie on top of each other. When this happens, the augmented matrix will have its first row, but all the second and third row will all be equal to zero. That means we'll have infinite number of solutions. The reason why this happens is because all of these will have the same exact normal, and if they have the same exact normal, the second and third row are all going to cancel out to zero. And that's why we will get infinite number of solutions. We can also have a situation where we have two coincident planes and one parallel. So two of them are touching at infinite number of points and one of them is completely separated. As we saw in the last video, if two planes are coincident, then one of the rows is going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, meaning that all of those values are canceled out. This is the situation with the third row here. That means one, the two planes, the first and the last row, will be coincident and the other one as you saw in the last video if they're parallel and not touching you will get zero 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 with some sort of value and that's the case meaning that that row is contains the plane that is parallel and not touching with the other two the next situation that we are going to look at is when all of the planes are parallel and they're not touching well, the augmented matrix for this one should look something like this, where the first row will have all the variables, but the second rows will have 0, 0, and 0, 0, 0, a number, and 0, 0, 0, a number. And similar to the previous video, we saw that when this happens, that means the planes are all parallel. And the next situation is when all the three planes meet at one particular point as shown in the diagram and in this case the augmented matrix will be as follows um, it will allow us to solve for x y and the z value so we will have no rows that have 0 0 0 and a value or 0 0 0 0 and in this case our solution is one particular point for our next two set of situation, one is that we will have two parallel and one intersecting plane. So one plane intersects with both of those two planes. So we'll have two lines of intersection here. And for the next one, we will have that every two planes will meet at one line. And this is the other situation. In this case, we will have three intersections and all of those three intersections are lines. Well, we don't have one particular solution for both of these situations. We have two lines for the first one and three lines for the second one. Because there is no one particular line or a point of intersection, our matrix is going to look as follow. The last row is going to have 0, 0, 0 and a constant value. And that means that we can't solve for one point or we can't solve for one particular line. We'd say that there is no solution. Here is our last two set of situations in which the planes will meet at one particular line. So the first one is when all the three planes will meet at one line, in this case the orange line. And the last possible situation is when we have two coincident planes that are on top of each other and we have the other plane intersecting them at one particular line. In both of these situations, our augmented matrix will have its last row with all zeros and then you will have two equations that will allow you to write the final solution as a line. 
The summary for this video is fast forwarded here. So if you want to pause and write down any of the information, please feel free to do so. I actually recommend going back to the video, drawing out all of the situations and writing down the proper augmented matrix for each. So you can have an idea and kind of thinking about the augmented matrix and figuring out why is it that a certain row is all zeros or it will have variables or coefficients as zeros and constant as a value. Now we're going to look at an example. In this example, we are going to determine the relationship between the following three planes for part A. And to, this, to start this off, we are going to write the augmented matrix for it. So we're going to write all the coefficient for the first, second, and third equation and the constant to the right. And then we are going to try to reduce it so that we have zeros on the corners, on the left side of the corners. So for row two, once we do this, we get all zeros. And for row three, we also get all zeros. Uh, because of this, we know that all the planes are coincident and they are, they're basically parallel and they have infinite number of solutions as well. We are going to try a different example. In this case, we have three different planes and we are going to start this off in the exact same way. We are going to start with the augmented matrix. Once we write all the coefficients in constant, we're going to try to make it into the echelon form. So uh, first we have a negative, we have a set of negative values in the first row. So let's change them to positive by multiplying row one by negative one. Reducing row two is easy. We just add row one to row two. So negative one and one add up to zero, negative one and one add up to zero, two and negative one add up to one, and negative three and five add up to two. For row three, to reduce it, we are going to take the first original row, multiply it by two and add it to row three. In this case, we will have two times negative one plus two, which will give us a zero. We will have two times negative one plus two, which will be zero. And we will have two times two plus negative four, which is also zero. For a constant, we got two times negative three plus six, which is also zero, meaning that all the values in our last row equal to zero. This automatically means that we will have a intersection at a line. So using the second row, we will have Z is equal to two. And using the first row, we will have X plus Y minus two times Z, which is two is equal to three. Here we will get x plus y is equal to seven. When we simplify it, we're gonna let y equal to t, and we will use that to write x plus t is equal to seven, and therefore x is equal to seven minus t. We have now come up with the parametric equation of the line, which is formed by the intersection of these three planes. We can change this to the vector form as well. For the vector form, the initial point will have x, for x it will be seven, for y it will be zero, and for z it will be two. And for the direction vector, what's the coefficient of t for x is negative one, for y it's one, and it's zero for z. Note that there are two possible cases for this, one in which all the three planes meet at one line, or if two planes are coincident and the other plane is intersecting at that line. To figure out the situation, we can check the normals and see if any of them are parallel. If two of the planes are parallel, then we can see if they share a point. And if they do, that means that we have the second situation when two of the planes are coincident and the other one is intersecting. If there is none of them are parallel, that means that it is three planes meeting at one line. I have prepared two questions for you folks to try out on your own and I will try to post a solution to these in a separate video as soon as I can. I hope that this video helped you realize how three planes can interact in space. I know that there was a lot of information in this video and to be honest it's very challenging drawing different planes in three dimension in a two dimensional page but I hope that it gave you some general idea about how planes interact in space. 
This is the last video lesson in this series and I hope that this series has helped you understand vectors a little bit better. Thank you for watching.